And there's a coral on the right to take a look at, please. Oh, yeah. Coming into view. See a bit. Stock. Looks like we might be able to see some associates on this guy, too. There are a lot of real stars on that one. This is a, definitely a condominium. <laughs> <laughs> this is a high rise right here. High rise hotel, high rise apartment here with lots of brittle stars hanging out on this uh, black coral. And you see a chirostylid uh, squat lobster in the lower field of view kind of bouncing around a little bit. Having all of so these associates, does it affect yeah. the yes, health please. at all? Yeah, I agree. Well, the associates play a role in um, kind of keeping the coral clean and happy. Given that there are so many associates, maybe this, um, this coral is able to sort of say devoid of um, particles and getting clogged up. And Scratching a little itch yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> so they are called squat lobsters because that, that telson or tail kind of is tucked under under the body. And so um, right now you can see is kind of extended its telson and it looks like it's <laughs> scratching an itch, which I need says. <laughs> it's cute. Oh, it's a type of Octocoral, you can see uh, the polyps have eight tentacles. And we're getting a really amazing view of the brittle star associates, these ophiroids, the uh, central disc. Samples? Yeah, you see the ophiroid brittle star arms moving around in the water. And a close up view of the octocoral that we're going to collect. The, do you want the whole thing? Sure. It's magnificent. It's got this sort of squiggly, squiggly branches, but I'm not a black coral specialist. So it's interesting about this, I that focus Leopathies, um, we've collected some in the Gulf of Mexico, and uh, Nancy Prouty from USGS has uh, dated the age of these corals to uh, be upwards of uh, 2,000 years old um, using C14 analysis, so radiocarbon isotope dating and um, so they the corals based on her analysis are really slow growing on the order of two to eight microns per year so not millimeters not centimeters but microns per year so and I guess it's it's settled uh, and north, encrusted yeah. on this really dark rock just like five meters yeah. northwest or is that the extension of the base, I wonder? Is that I don't know. a shark case there? Uh, Go ahead, uh, So while we're zoomed in here, this anthemastus is an octocoral. You can see that the, each polyp has eight tentacles. And then you see some crinoids on the right-hand side of the screen. Okay. It's arms extended, and then there's it's also possible. sponges all over this rock. Looks like a glass sponge, hexactinellid. This is a type of primnoid octocoral, the primnoid polyps have these oh. scales on them. I think it's just your head, maybe it's just your head. Sort of appear sense. rough when we look at it really closely, you can see it kind of looks, uh, have a, has a rough texture and then um, octocorals, Strange. as we've been saying throughout the expedition, they, um, each polyp has right. eight tentacles, so that's another distinguishing feature. Um, and then with this particular uh, type of coral, um, the, the polyps aren't um, at right angles with the branch, they're actually pointed mm -hmm. downwards towards the, um, the seafloor. So that's another Sorry. distinguishing yeah, characteristic. Yeah, I'll hurt it. Thank you. I don't think I've seen that, that type of sea star before, or ophiroid. It looks like Asteroschema. Uh, I believe it's a paramercia, although it looks really strange. And that's a bass. With that star. long stalk. It's a Yuri Alad. It's a snake star. Snake star? Still asked so let's go in the sponge okay, and the the star on the bottom first. Take a look at that. Thank you. Looks like there's zoanthids on the right hand side of the screen, and then the ophiroids look like zebras striped. They have yeah. like zebra legs. Yeah. Those look cool. Yes. Nice. More of you, more zoanthids. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely zoanthids. The zoanthids have created this uh, coating on the coral. 
I think that's why there's a one that don't get the love. They smother everything? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> can, we get a, yeah. Oh, sorry. can we get a shot of the crab on the right of this coral? That rock is actually really nice cool. Fractures in that rock. Yeah. yeah. This one with Philophilia again. We're at 494 meters. Yep. Take a closer look, see if there are any live polyps. Oh. Uh, so far, I see dead skeleton. I might have to paint, tilt up a little bit. Coral. Yep, yeah, there are live polyps. A lot of there we go. Yeah, and polyps. You can see some live polyps on the right hand side. Yeah. Oh, you can see the black skeleton there. Gives the black corals their name, and then the, those are the the shape of the polyps that I was talking about when we were looking at the sponge. They just have like the two longer tentacles coming off the top. Good morning for our listeners just tuning okay. in. This is number eight. We're looking at a nice example of a black coral. Uh, there was a crab on it. Hopefully you caught it. This is a primnoid octocoral. We collected some earlier on on the other side of the seamount. Was there, well that was, is that just crinoid below? It's not another coral below? It's a, the red is a brisingid sea star. Oh, okay. But the, um, there's a, a bit to look at on the coral above. And that was an anemone attached to the top of it? Yeah, like it's a, a little research type of anemone, um, flytrap anemone. Yeah, the temperature and salinity it looks like it's gone up a little bit. I'm not sure. Yeah, there might be some. But it looks like, yeah, maybe a different water mass moving down over this wall. Mixing around. 